The following videotape was prepared in the fall of 1992 as an internal communication. It is designed to inform corporate affairs personnel of the state of the science regarding environmental tobacco smoke as of this date. Because the body of scientific data is constantly being expanded, this information may become outdated quite quickly. Please check with the corporate headquarters before disseminating this tape and do not use this in communicating our position to those outside the company. I'm Tom Borelli. I'm a scientist, a biochemist by training. This presentation is a review of the science on environmental tobacco smoke. On smoking itself, we have recognized that smoking is a risk factor in the development of some types of lung cancer and certain other human diseases because statistical associations have been reported between smoking and the occurrence of those diseases. However, based on a careful review of the science, we believe that environmental tobacco smoke has not been shown to be a risk factor in the development of lung cancer, respiratory disease in children, or heart disease. Studies on the first two of these diseases were the basis for the draft reports prepared by the staff of the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA. In this 1992 draft report, it was recommended on highly questionable scientific grounds that environmental tobacco smoke or ETS be classified as a group A carcinogen. We disagree with the EPA staff findings and this presentation will tell you why and the how of our disagreement. Much of this presentation will be devoted to the studies on ETS and lung cancer. That is because most of the studies concern this particular disease and the problems with these studies are similar to those found in the studies on heart disease and respiratory disease. As with lung cancer and heart disease, the studies on respiratory effects in children have methodological problems. Once again, none of the studies actually measured exposures. These studies are based primarily on questionnaires that were completed by parents. The questionnaires rely on the ability of parents to accurately recall exposures and they are subject to a number of biases. Studies on the subject of bias have reported that a mother's and a father's responses to questions about their children can differ considerably, and the way a question is worded makes a difference in the answer. Furthermore, there is no biological mechanism identified in the studies to explain the possible association between ETS exposure and respiratory illness in children. The flaws in the studies on ETS in children are similar to those in the epidemiology on lung cancer and cardiovascular disease. So there it is. The staff of the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency in a draft risk assessment said that ETS should be classified as a group A or known human carcinogen. The justification for the EPA draft recommendation was relative risk for ETS of two or lower. We strongly disagree with the EPA staff's conclusion and its purported scientific basis. Throughout this presentation, we have used the terms weak relative risk and no statistical significance to describe many of the scientific findings. Here is another view from Dr. Morton Littman, the chairman of the panel of scientists that advised the EPA. Dr. Littman, even though he believes that ETS exposure causes disease, told journalists at a news conference that the possibility of cancer from environmental tobacco smoke is, and we quote, a small added risk probably much less than you took to get here through Washington traffic, close quote. If the small risk of ETS is comparable to driving a car, what drives the decision process for EPA? In 1990, I wrote a letter to Michael Gao, a program manager at the Congressional Office of Technology Assessment. I pointed to the importance of the Janrix study, the largest study on ETS done at the time, and Janrix's report of a risk of less than one for ETS. Gao said in his letter of reply that he tended to agree with the findings of the study. Despite this, Gao said, and we quote, anything that reduces smoking has substantial health benefits, and making smokers into pariahs, for whatever reasons, does just that, 